Hey guys, happy Wednesday. I wanna do a pocket door video. One of the things that people have a ton of problems with the pocket doors, either they're scraping, they don't slide properly, they're stuck inside the pocket. How do you fix them? How do you get to them? So I'm gonna show you some of the, the tricks today. It's really pretty simple. There's a track in the ceiling and the door sliding along, but there's ways to adjust them, okay? There's screws that you can adjust them. You can take them off, but you gotta get them out of the wall. I'm gonna show you how to do that. There's a bunch of little tricks that are going on with pocket doors, but once you do it, you can get your pocket doors working again. So guys, let's run over to Thistle Hill. I got a stack of pocket doors over there. Different kinds of problems, different issues. We're going to check it out. We're going to elevate your game as far as pocket doors. Come join me. Guys, let's look at pocket doors. I want to show you kind of what's going on here. This is Thistle Hill. Okay, so Thistle Hill's this cattle baron's house, 1904. It was built, 1911. It got redone. But you are looking at the two-panel pocket door on this house, and we're going to look at a lot of them. But you'll see on this door, we kind of got a red tone going here. On the other side, it's a green tone. Okay, the hardware is pretty much similar everywhere. It's got the push button thing that when I push it, the, the, this thing comes out. These are a little bit wonky, but this, this gets pulled out and brought over. Same thing with this thing too. Now there's a key that would go into this skeleton key and that would go into this lock and it would kind of hook over and hold these things. So you could actually lock someone in here. But this is like, like really high quality pocket door hardware and, and they're essentially on the whole house. We've got this kind of rustic craftsman-y kind of tough looking pull on either side. But again, you've got a key in here so these can be lockable, right? And you know, this is how this all goes together. That's the hardware. Essentially, the same thing is untrue in our houses today. There's a track up here and you've got uh, stops on either side, okay? We've got these adjustable stops um, and they really don't do anything functional except kind of keep the door from kind of swinging around too much. And so they are really there as guides and they can be moved around and adjusted based on kind of the needs of the door. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this door all the way out and show you this backside because the guts inside, with, inside here is really interesting. Now this door slides pretty well, okay? But look what's going on in here. I've got a track right there, screws down onto this board, which is loose. Well, that's not very good. But then you look back in there and they have lined the inside of this thing with a, with a bead board. And so, you know, going up the whole length of the inside, they've got bead board. So this would have been built one wall at a time, right? Slowly putting these, these pieces together and then, and then having their clean encasement so they, can, so they can run back in there. Now, they've also put a block in there and and you can see that there's a block here on the edge that stops. The other thing I want to point out is this bolt here, okay, and this metal stop here. So basically there is a stop that was put into this. I'm going to show you that on another door, but there's a metal piece inserted into here that keeps the door from coming out. You'll need to know that because you have to get your door, you know, out of the way so that you can adjust it. So the other thing you notice is that this door is sliding all the way across, right? I'm, I'm feeling a little bit of rubbing that I'm getting down here. And so I can adjust that. How do you adjust it? If you can look up in here, there's a big, big screw up in here. It's a flathead screw. It's a round head. It looks like it's almost the size of a nickel, okay, as far as the face of this screw. And it is just begging you to get in there and adjust this thing. This is how you raise your door up and down is with that screw. You've got one on this side and you've got one on the other side. And it's that screw right there that I'm going to stick up in here with my big screwdriver to get adjustments and move this thing up and down. When I'm putting this door back in, right, you know, I've got that track down there at the bottom. It, it's, it's hitting it, it won't let me in. So I'm actually gonna pick up, look what I'm doing guys. I'm gonna put my knee down, I'm just gonna lift up the back end of this door so I can get it onto that track. Did you see me doing that? So I want you to know that you can kind of lift these things around and play with them to get them moving. But I've got this door, you know, now sliding pretty well, going back into that pocket. I want to show you that stop because you can see it over here on this other door. Here's the other door. We got a paint grade side, we got a stain grade side, and there's going to show you kind of a fun little sleuthing thing that I discovered when I was playing around with this. I'm going to pull it all the way out, and this one doesn't have a stop, right? So I can pull it all the way through here. What's happening right now is it's hitting 
right here where these tracks are coming together, okay? And so I, I'm only gonna be able to pull it through so far unless I can get those tracks to line up, but I'm not, I'm not having any luck. So I'm just gonna assume, yeah, I can see it hitting the other wheel of the other track and it, the other track is lower than this track. I've got it as far out as I can get it. You can see that this door, how dirty it is, hasn't been out in a while, but look at this guys. This is that stop I was telling you about. There's a nut on this thing that is keeping this piece here. And basically what it is, there's a nut and then there's a nail to keep it from falling back in here. But this gets pushed over and dropped down. And that's what connects with that metal piece on that other side. Basically, you need to know, and I'm gonna show you on this other door, that when I push this back in here and come over on this door, do the same thing, pull this door out. Notice the hardware changes. Notice we still, we have a different style of hardware on these doors and you'll see the hardware change as you move around this house. But now I'm gonna hit a stop, watch, okay? And look right there, guys, you can see the stop has dropped down. So it's like a little gate piece that gets pushed up in there and when it falls past the door, it opens up like this and keeps the door. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slide my screwdriver in here, lift it up and it's gonna allow me to bring that door out. So there's that stop, lifted it up. Now I can pull it all the way out, right? So now I can see back inside this track, see what's going on in there, a lot of plaster dust and things going on. But here's my stop piece that wasn't on that other door that falls in place that, that keeps, that may be the thing, because some of you guys have said, hey, I can't get my door out all the way. This may be the reason why. The other thing you'll notice is that I've got this door all the way onto that track. Remember the tracks were, were lined up differently. And if you look up inside there, you see that they are flathead screws that are holding the track to the framing. So I, you can actually take your screwdriver up in here and raise and lower those tracks as you want if you wanted to pull that other door all the way across. But now that it's open, again, I've got the same flathead screwdriver. These work pretty good, but that one needs to be adjusted. So I'm not gonna jack with this one because it's already working pretty good. But you know, hopefully you're seeing what's going on inside these walls and how all this is put together. I wanna show you one other cool thing on this door. If you come around and look on this side, as I'm looking at this wood, I'm realizing that this wood is different than oak. And I think that is mahogany. And so then I start looking at this door and I see all this grain inside here. And I know that we've got a mahogany room inside here that's been painted. So pretty cool find here. And I didn't know until I saw the back side of this door, which wasn't painted, right? And I can see the mahogany up in there. So I've got a pretty cool find here. Mahogany on this side. It's gonna be something we'll ask the owner if they want to go back with this mahogany now that we found it. So don't be afraid to move these things around. It, you can see that I'm kind of stuck right here, but I know I'm stuck because the tracks were at a different height. So I'm gonna just lift this up and get it back going again. And remember, I've got my little key piece that I all I have to do is touch that bottom corner of that and I lock that, that stop right back in place. So I got my stop back in there door back in place, this all working pretty good. That door over there, there's no room for a double pocket door. So I have a single pocket door that goes across that whole thing. What is that, an eight foot, 10 foot opening? And you'll notice we got two sides. We got a really dark stain on one side and kind of a lighter stain on the other side. But this door is one ginormous door that's gonna open all the way up across here. And you see that there's no room for a pocket door on this side. And now this opens all the way across and I've got a huge four panel door that, that goes all the way back up in here. Now, I know that there's an adjustable wheel on the back side, and if you've got a house like this and you got to get up in there, just realize we're gonna to have to open this up on one side or the other in order to get in there and adjust that. It's just the way it is, guys. There's no magic bullet as far as adjusting this door when it's a single sided like this and it's closed in. This door right here, you can see that possibly the back wheel has fallen off. See how this panel is, is cockeyed? That I've got a two inch gap here and about a four inch gap there. So I know that most likely, unless my tracks actually fallen down, right, which will require us to open up the wall, which we don't want to do. I'm going to try to lift this up and get it back on its track. If you can look right up here, see this? I've got 
a bunch of plaster that's come down and fallen into this door, okay? So one reason why it may have kicked off the track is because of all this plaster. So that may be why my door has fallen off the track, but I can't even move this door, right? And so I'm gonna have to play with lifting this up. See, see I, can, I can pull that back and actually adjust this door, but I'm gonna try to without, Gosh, dog it. So probably what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get help. <laughs> so we're either gonna put a block here, but I'm gonna try to get a couple guys to help me wrangle this door on there. Cause the other thing I'd have to do is open up this paneling, right? And take the paneling off the wall and go up in there and try to lift it back on, right? But, but if the track's falling down, and I can probably look up in here and see that, you know, that track looks pretty sturdy. So I don't think the track's falling down, but here's a door that we're gonna have to do more work on in order to get it going again. These doors are working on a pretty simple system, okay? There's a track, there's wheels, and there's an adjustment visible from both sides, from the front and the back, that allow you to lift that door and move it around. We've actually got a low spot right there uh, by that door, and we're gonna lift up the foundation. So we might have some issues on that door once we lift the foundation, that's gonna cause some adjustment. But it's a simple system. You got the pulley going up in there. You adjust that pulley. You, you can ride the door across here. You can even take, if you've got scraping going along, you can even take your door off, okay? Requires more work, but take the door off trim the bottom of it, right? And then put it back on. Because sometimes the house has just moved so much over the years, heaving and lifting. In some of these places, I got like an eighth of an inch. And so it may require you to cut the bottom of the door to, to get it moving again, but that's okay. It just depends on how much surgery you want to do. That's the simple look at how these doors are put together. I hope that helps. Hey, be sure to follow me on Instagram and Facebook. We've got a podcast, Passion for Craft. We're talking about building better. We've got a whole community there. We'd love for you to join it. Dropping things from my library every Tuesday. Things to, to help you build better. Things that are design ideas. Things to help you become a master builder. Hope you check it out. I'm Brent Hull. Thanks for watching.